Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I want to address uh, kind of a contradiction. Uh, oh man, that's uh, this this this. Hang on, this opening sounds too douchey. Let me start over. Hey everybody, this is Perch. What you drinking? I'm uh, I'm, I'm having a little bit of whiskey here. Um, big shock. Anyway, uh, you know, I get from time to time emails, but more likely what I see is uh, somebody sends me a screen capture of uh, others talking about me in, on Facebook or some kind of private group, or they send me links, um, which in fairness, I asked for, you know, when people are like, will you address what these people are saying about you? And then they, they don't provide a link. I said, you should send me a link. Now people are sending me a link. And I'm like, oh, I, I liked it better when there was no link. Uh, but one of the common comments is that it says, well, this channel is one of is, is negative. It's like all those other negative outrage channels on YouTube. And I, I take that comment seriously. I, I don't agree with it, but I think these things sneak up on you. You, you don't realize how you're coming across, how you're sounding. You don't realize, and, and particularly with me at least, I'm not speaking for others, I'll get a topic in my head and then I'll have like three or four things to say about it. So you get these groupings of videos. And now I'm recording you know, hundreds of videos in advance um, and, and, you know, so I try and space them out a little bit. It's why sometimes, you know, you, you start listening to a video and it's talking about current events from like three months ago. Um, but I don't want this channel to have a, a negative tone, but it's, it's hard when there's problems with comics or when there's things that you want to solve, how do you say, Hey, here's a solution for comics, but um, you know, I still, you know, still love comics. Uh, it's, comics are still wonderful. Glad they're here. Because I feel all those things. I do think comics are wonderful. I am glad they're here. And and I know I may I disagree with, with some of you. I'd rather see comics in this broken state existing than gone. I just think we shouldn't have to live with the broken state. I, I think it's it's there's this false equivalency that gets brought up of like, well, you know, if you don't like comics, leave. It's not a it's not an A or B thing. It's not, uh, hey, take it just as it is or get out completely. There is this idea of forward progress. It turns out as human beings, we're wired to make forward progress and improve. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's inherent in everything. It's inherent in parenting. When you have kids, you don't just, they don't just pop out and then you're like, well, this is what we got and nothing is ever going to change from that. Of course not. You teach, you, people grow, they evolve, their thoughts, you know, change over time. They learn more. This is, this is how functional people operate. And I think this is where in comics, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, we get caught up in, in trying to figure out how do we, how do we point out the flaws? How do we talk about the problems while at the same time, um, not letting it consume us. So, you know, I, again, I see these comments like, oh, it's one of those negative channels. And then I look and I'm like, okay, you know, are, I, I try my best not to get too upset uh, with various things. I read comics that I really enjoy. I read comics that I despise. I try and talk about both of them. But if anything, I'm going to try and talk more about the ones that I enjoy. You do that too much, of course, and somebody's going to accuse you of being a simp for, for comics. And it, it just, again, it's this polarized world we look at. But how, it, this is something for us to wrestle with of, I can't accept what feels like a bit of a contradiction. And that contradiction in this case is um, for the people who say everything is going great. And then you see artists and writers and others having to do GoFundMes. I, and Mags has a, a GoFundMe of like, I, you know, we are critically needing money. So this is somebody who was a, a relatively big name, went through the Snyder class, uh, you know, four years ago. Uh, I, when I say big name, I mean, no, not a top name. I think the name got inflated because of online kind of shenanigans on all sides, but, uh, but still, you know, there's somebody getting a lot of work and now here we are, uh, it was with needing GoFundMes in order to, you know, make rent and survive. So, so I can't, I can't sign up to this idea that, Hey, everything is perfect when this is a story and this is a situation going on. When I meet artists. And I think, man, I'd love to work with this person, but their page rate is going to be way too expensive. I could never, I can never afford it. Uh, they, they're too popular. And then I get into a conversation. I hear the page rate. And I'm like, oh my God, I could just, I mean, I could hire you to make a comic just for me. And just as a vanity project, I, I, I should do that. I, I, I think these people should have rates that are far beyond what I can afford. That, that should be the way it works. 
I think when I hear uh, stories about, uh, you know, like Matt Fraction uh, or Ed Brubaker and kind of their experiences with comics and, and the fact that a, like what Brubaker said, a tiny cameo in the Captain America series or film, I don't remember if, which one it was, made more than than some of the comic work. That's that's that that's broken. I think we can all agree that's broken. I think that it, it when you start to wander into more social topics or diversity topics, it gets tougher. Um, I still maintain, and this is a point that's easily manipulated by people, but when you have, say, 50th anniversary of Luke Cage and they can't bother to put a series out or even a comic out because things get canceled. Now Marvel's saying, no, we didn't cancel it. It's just, uh, it's just off. Uh, we're just pulling it for an indeterminate amount of time. Like, okay, that's canceled. Stop playing word games. When you see uh, new projects get introduced and uh, and they they never they never hold, um, that again that that feels like a, a problem. Um, it, it, for that, it doesn't feel like a problem. It is a problem. Now we can argue as much as we want about you know how representation is happening and who's doing what, all the rest of this kind of stuff. But these are these are broken problems. And it affects me because I enjoy comics a great deal. I've made it my my pastime as a hobby. I've made it my business as a retailer. Um, I don't consider YouTube my business, just for what it's worth. We're putting these videos out, and I, I, I talk all this stuff. This isn't a business for me. I, this is still fits into the world of hobby. But regardless, I love this, I love this industry. I love comics. Yes, I, I love it. And so I think if you love it, then you want it to be as as good and strong as possible. That's where I'm coming from. Um, I think that it's just it's very easy to lose that in in everything. Uh, one of the funnier uh, complaints that people will say about me is like, "Oh, he tries to sound reasonable, uh, but he's really working an agenda." I, I think the idea that I'm working an agenda, I find that as ridiculous as as my comments on agenda other places. I'm not working any agenda. It's easy to ignore me. It's very, very easy to ignore me. And if uh, if stuff bothers you, you should. But it's, I guess, uh, what what is it that people really want here? And I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this to everybody, including other YouTubers, including fans. What What is it that you're after? To me, the, the most obvious uh, group to understand, the simplest group to understand, is, is the customers, is the fans, is the whatever, collectors, wherever you are in that cycle. Um, many of those people want to purchase things that they feel good about. They want to buy things that, uh, you know, that, 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 that fulfill their need for collecting comics. That's what they're after. Um, you know, it, it, it really, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, I think it's a lot harder for the creators, for the publishers, for everyone else to get tied into a lot of other pieces. It gets more complicated, um, which remind which, which strikes me about this. Uh, I'll, this is not a complete, you know, segue, but it, it kind of fits to all this. Um, as we talk about trying to improve comics and make a better industry, a lot of efforts, a lot of labels, a lot of imprints we see. Um, and, and I think it's good, by the way. Uh, Zoop is doing their thing for crowdfunding. I think that's good. All of these efforts are, are good attempts. We're learning. Not all of them will succeed. Not all will last. But even if they fail, we're going to get knowledge from that data. And I think that's, that's important. That's good. Um, one of the things that seems curious to me is as you see all these efforts, a lot of them are aimed at improving life for creators. And I think that's, that's good. Like I've talked about, that's important. We've, if you're going to change comics, you're going to make things better then having a better world for creators is, is a good one. Um, but when you see a lot of these businesses, um, they're, they're rarely aimed at the customers, at the fans. Now, by the way, I know some of you are going to come in here and say, uh, oh, that's what Comicsgate is doing. It's for the fans. I, I understand that's the point of view, but that's, that's not exactly what I'm getting at here when I make this comment. What I'm getting at is that when you have these businesses come up and they talk about structure for how comics are going to get released and how people are going to get paid and how things are, are going to go on, um, they rarely talk about customer friendly things and customer friendly things that are tangible, not like communication, but like cost, like which of these efforts are going to talk about reliability for shipment and cost of the product. 
when I see these uh, publisher attempts, like uh, we, we got a new uh, consortium for creators to create comics and they're going to create comics and it's, it's, it's got a great distribution plan and all this other stuff. I always try and scan to the, okay, what's the timing? How can you, you know, when are these things going to come out and how much are they going to cost? And invariably every time the cost and the timing, it, the cost is almost always higher, higher than current big two. Everything is pushing north of $10, usually north of 20. That's again, if, if customer wants to pay for that, that's their business, but I wouldn't necessarily call that customer friendly. Same thing with timing. Okay. This book is going to come out, you know, once a year, or it, it will say things like the creators are going to keep all the rights for this stuff and they'll be able to put out their project. And it's like, all right, but how many projects is this is a one shot. And almost all these projects talk about creating a, a new universe, a, a shared universe of characters and a, a bold new experience. It's like, cool. Okay. Bold new experience. You know, lots of things to go on, lots of storylines, lots of characters to get involved in. I see these, uh, these posters and these cheats with, uh, with multiple characters and everything on it. Um, and it's like, all right, so how, when, when, how many issues are we talking about here? It's like the first issue will come out sometime next year. It's like, okay. And the second issue will come out. I don't know. Never. When I think about customer friendly or making life's better for comics, improving comics, to me, one of those, you know, two of those very important things are cost. Comics are too expensive and timing that you're actually able to get books in a reasonable time. If you have a story that's done in one, it's a, it's an OGN and you get a complete story. Cool. Then you only need to ship one. But in many cases, what customers are asking for is a, you know, an ongoing series. That's what they want. That's what they're after. But very few of these efforts are actually trying to address that. The efforts are all just, uh, you know, it's, it's like, Hey, we're going to, it's, it's always, we're going to give more ownership to the creators again. Cool. I think that's important. I think that's good. But let's not forget about the customers. The customers actually need things too. And right now, what I hear most commonly from the customers, uh, when you get outside of, outside of kind of ideological fights and all the rest, it's, it needs to be cheaper. It needs to be affordable and it needs to come out in a timely manner. Okay. So who's working on that problem? Honestly, who's, who's working on that? I don't know if anybody's working on that. Now that, that's what worries me a bit. Um, you know, I think that the, the conversation around how do we make comics better has to continue. Um, I, you know, it, you, I guess there's three routes. You can say customers are, or comics are great just as they are. I think that route's insane. You can say customers need to, or co customers, comics. See, I'm so I've tied comics to customers so much and now I'm fumbling up the words together. Either comics are perfect the way they are stupid. Uh, comics are inherently broken and everything must be burned down. That's also stupid or comics need to improve. And when you get to that third choice, that third lane, you got to start saying what needs to, what needs to be fixed. And I think you have to look at it through the lens of yes, the creators, you have to look at it through distribution. You have to look at it through retailers. You also have to look at it through customers. How do we make life better for customers? And one of the things, and this is why I think a lot of the crowdfunding stuff, again, great. I'm not knocking it. I think people should keep doing it. I think that uh, the, the people who are putting out the $25 books with a bunch of kind of tchotchkes and other things, cool. Again, don't stop doing that. You're providing data. We're all learning. You're getting product out. You do have a customer base that's into that. That's great. But how do we serve the customers that are looking for cheaper, faster, more? Cause that's in my experience, a lot of customers. Um, when we talk and, and lots of people talk about manga and how it's winning and everything else. Well, one of the key ways that it's winning is speed and that speed is a little fictional because what's happening is this stuff's getting translated. So it's coming out at a much faster rate than it's actually being produced. And a lot of people are discovering it and then discovering that they've got, you know, mountains of content to go through. So there, there's, you know, it's, it's not a complete apples to apples comparison, but manga, if you look at it, it's cheaper, it's faster. There's plenty of it to put your hands on. And that's, that's what customers are after. So manga is addressing what customers are looking for, for those reasons, particularly. 
I see, again, there's a lot of videos that talk about, well, manga doesn't get into the political stuff. The creators aren't mouthing off on Twitter. I mean, that's true. Um, the biggest reason why that's true is most of the creators are either not on Twitter or do not speak English. And so you, you know, wouldn't you wouldn't even know if like they could be writing F Trump in Japanese, you wouldn't know it. But regardless, what's really winning for that is cost and speed. So when we look at the US, when are we going to get to cost and speed? Again, you may listen to this video, you may say it's negative. Um, I guarantee there will be some people who are, who are irritated because I didn't uh, promote Comicscape more as the fan movement. But again, what I'm specifically talking about are those elements. Um, I, I'm, again, I'm just pointing this out. I do think there are solutions. I think it's going to require people work together in order to do that. Um, I, I don't think that, that, that it's, it currently does not seem to have a focus right now. And it needs more of one. I think there is money in comics. I think a lot of people uh, in comics have this habit of just kind of repeating the same kind of talking points or the same institutional knowledge that has changed, changed dramatically. And innovators uh, don't just rely on 20 year old information. They come up with new things and that's what comics needs. It needs more new things. Anyway, food for thought, try and keep positive. Uh, you know, actually, you know, positivity isn't the goal of this channel either. It's just, I, I don't want to be all negative because I don't think you make, I don't think you make forward progress. If you're all negative or all Pollyanna, you've got to be, you know, you, you got to be throwing things out anyway. Thanks everybody for participating, listening, sending questions, all that kind of stuff. I appreciate uh, everything that's built up here. Let's go fix comics. And anyone who says comics doesn't need fixing. Um, sorry, stop, just full stop. You've got writers and artists who are doing GoFundMes. In some cases, like uh, what was Bags's case, like the third GoFundMe in six months. That did, did, stop saying comics don't need fixing. It obviously needs fixing. This this industry creates this way too much to say everything is perfect. At the same time, stop saying burn it all down. That's stupid too. Come on, grow up. <laughs> Thanks for listening.